This is a quick review on VSCPR theory. VSCPR is an accepted model for bonding. It's a set of rules for determining the shape of a molecule, and it's completely based on the fact that electrons repel one another. Several concepts define this model. First is the concept of valence shell electrons. Um, valence shell electrons are the number of electrons that the molecule, not just the atom, the constituent atom, have to bond. We use the following equation to define the valence shell electrons, or VSE. I will refer to it as VSE for the rest of this presentation. So the number of VSE, the VSE is the number of valence electrons in the central molecule plus one electron for every substituent. The, uh, the central molecule is chosen, um, it is the less, the least negative, electronegative, so the furthest away from fluorine on the periodic table. There is an exception in that terminal oxygen does not contribute any electrons. As you can see in the Lewis dot structure below, all of the six valence electrons in an oxygen pair with themselves, so there's none to give to the central molecule. Um, but this isn't this doesn't hold for like hydroxyl groups or esters. Um, those have some extra things bonded on, so it actually then it does have electrons to give. So we can do an example. Oh, wait, we'll do an example on this. Here we have an example using trimethylamine. We see that the nitrogen, the central molecule, since it's the least electronegative, donates five electrons. Uh, we add that to the three substituent groups, the methyl groups, which are three electrons, and we end up with eight electrons. Trimethylamine therefore has eight VSE. But why is this important? Well, VSE, as we'll see in the next slide, tells us the shape that the molecule is going to take. This chart shows the different um, geometries that a molecule can take based upon VSE. So as you can see, the 8 VSE we just solved for would take a tetrahedral shape, as shown in the picture on the far right. You will also see that there are several different shapes, um, the linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal, bipyramidal, and octahedral. Always remember that unpaired electrons can take the shape of, or take the place of one of the substituent molecules, so they can reside in one of these places, um, which means that sometimes the shapes may appear differently. So, for instance, in the uh, 10 VSE um, section, one could get um, a pyramid, just a straight pyramid instead of a bipyramid, a trigonal pyramid, um, if unpaired electrons were to take the top, the axial position. Um, axial positions refer to the ones that are in the z-axis, or the ones that go straight up and down.
So you may be wondering why we have xenon, a noble gas, bonding. This one is sort of a characteristic example that you might see on your IB exam. The guy who did this got a Nobel Prize, so pretty sweet for him. Um, but xenon, as a noble gas, will um, contribute 8 electrons, and the 4 fluorines will contribute 4 electrons. Um, this brings our VSE to 12 electrons. So we can kind of see that would, that would imply that it would take an octahedral shape. Well, there aren't six molecules to bond with the xenon, there's only four, which implies there are two pairs, um, two lone sets of lone pairs. Um, those will occupy the axial um, positions, top and bottom, because they do repel the most. Um, but the, uh, so you can see from the Lewis dot structure that the xenon, or the fluorine, will actually split some of the paired electrons, some of the lone pairs the xenon possesses. Um, this will take on a special shape because the lone pairs occupy the axial positions, called a square planar shape. Um, this isn't against the SCPR, this is actually just um, a further application of the SCPR. So this is a good one to study, and other ones like it. There's actually a practice problem later on that you'll, you'll encounter.